Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for Friday the 13th of January 2023. Well, thank you all for being here today. And um, again, if you are joining us live, please drop your questions over here on the questions tab. And otherwise, you're welcome to join here on the chat tab. And let's see. Um, We'll go ahead and do the meditation to jump into the heart space and to bring us all into this beautiful, safe, sacred container, which we create here at 50 Questions Friday. So if you are new to joining us here, basically, as we step into this this field, this space, and we come in with our hearts, uh, we're going to go into the heart space here with the meditation. And basically, this container that we create, it is, it's a safe space that it's, um, it's a sacred space. So only your highest and best can be functioning within this space to work with each other. Um, Gosh, what am I trying to say? It's basically a healing space where we all bring wisdom and share with each other on a soul level. So we're not coming here and trying to get into chat and trying to talk people and to be in this way or that way. It's it's a soul level thing that as we all hold space together, we just keep shifting. And I hope you can feel that because I can really feel everybody having shifts already jumping in this morning. So that's fantastic. Let's go ahead and jump into the heart space. And then I'll check in here on chat. So closing your eyes. Putting your attention to the physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth. Within the earth, there's this crystal sun, the heart of the earth. Imagine breathing in that light, that support, that energy of the earth. Up through the feet and into the heart. Next, you connect with that highest aspect of you, of your soul, or of source, soul, creator, God, however you see the higher power. I see it as within our heart, there is a sun, and it is a giant crystal sun in creation. And this is a huge creator aspect of you. However it is that you are connecting with you, is simply breathing in. Allowing your light, your soul, your consciousness, all that you are to step into this here present moment. When we talk about you being a creator being, that is simply just an aspect of you, a part of you. Just as the human right here and now is a part of your soul. Your soul is so infinitely huge. And it's all those supporting parts and pieces that we ask to step in, in alignment and support with you. So the simplicity of going into the heart space is simply taking a breath from the earth, a breath from creation, and then that third breath is breathing them both together within you. So you are grounded, connected, and in the heart space. So make this exercise your own. It's very important to go into the heart space. Um, It's something that we discuss quite often in our videos and and all the benefits of being in the heart space. All right. So jumping over here to Chad. Hey, Connie from Maine. Hey, Sim from Atlanta. And we have somebody, Victoria from Northern California. Hey, Samson. (laughs) <laughs> Good to see you here. Hey, Renard. And Melissa Kay from Ecuador. Um, so yeah, please do feel free to jump on chat here if you wish, if you're here live. Otherwise, if you're here watching on YouTube, you're welcome to sign up for our newsletter, which then you are alerted to when we're having our live 50 questions. Um, so please do drop any questions over here on the questions tab, and I'm going to go ahead and get started with Uh, Questions that we have from the internet. From emails here. So let's see. Uh, All right. So we have a comment here from Elijah. 
Hi, I recently purchased the Quantum Heart Coil and noticed something, some changes in my anxiety. Almost immediately, I felt as if it makes me feel less weighted down by stuff. Is this common? Also, I've been wearing it with a Tesla purple plate and noticed a bit of difference with the energy. Any thoughts? So, yes, you know, wearing the tools. So you have a Quantum Heart Coil pendant. Um, as soon as you put that on, it is connecting. It's grounding you with the earth, connecting you with creation. It's doing that Trinity breath, basically what we just did. And when you ground and connect with the earth, it is amazing on what can be released. So when you go heart to heart with the earth in this Trinity breath, you can simply just make the statement to yourself that you're releasing all energies that no longer serve you. And earth is a very powerful, transformative being. And so she just asks that you release. And all it is, is it's just you making a choice saying, okay, I let go of the junk that no longer serves me. I allow it to flow away with grace and ease. You take in that deep breath from the heart space and you just allow the earth to just shift all of that for you. So let's see. We're going to go in. Oh yeah, we were talking about the uh, quantum heart coil pendant. So basically as soon as you put that pendant on, it is going to have immediate release if 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 you are ready and willing. And that's it is that you know we see occasionally see a clients um you know both Brenda and I that you know you can say that you're ready to let go of whatever it is that is ailing you in your creation. But so many people are hmm, unconsciously deeply enamored with their creation, whether it is the suffering or, you know, whatever it is, um, you can totally shift your entire creation. Well, that's, that's what we're doing is we are stepping in as, as creators um, consciously. And we can begin to shift our entire realities. And it is simply a choice. Um, and we talk about that a lot throughout all the videos is um, just simply making a choice that you no longer choose to participate in that experience. And um, the tools are helping hold space for, for that release of, of all of those old creations that were that that do weight you down so when you feel that sense of of upliftment of lightness after you put on the tools um especially the first time that you're introduced to them because there's such a disparity between you know frequencies of where you were at and after you start to just let go of stuff with ease by being in these fields then you totally feel light because we carry so much with us we carry all of our stories through all of our lifetimes. Um, and everything's culminating right here and now to be released. So anyway, we'll keep going here. Um, hey, Anne from Ohio. Good morning from New Jersey. Hey, Joe from Oregon. And Christine from Oz. Good to see you all here. All right. So we have another question from email. Okay, my questions are, I have a wisdom wand pendant in silver. Do I need to carry anything else with me for protection or is this enough? Nope, uh, the wisdom wand in silver or actually any single one of the tools that you carry on your person. And it can even be a cell phone tab that you have on your cell phone that you carry your cell phone on your person. Any of the tools that you carry is enough to bolster your field to where you become a transformer of energies. So again, when you're wearing a pendant, it's not like the pendant is radiating out and clearing all these fields for you. The pendant is working with your field and bringing you more into alignment and anchored and connected and grounded and allows your field then to be that harmonizing field, which then harmonizes all electromagnetics that come into your field. And in true reality, we do not need any of the Twisted Sage tools to stand fully in our power and our light to where we're not touched by any outside energetic influences. 
5G millimeter waves, EMFs, dense consciousness, entities, whatever it is. Um, these tools are here to assist us. They're training wheels. They are, they're here to assist us to where we can stand in these fields on our own. So anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I keep getting distracted here this morning. So yeah, basically wearing that wisdom wand or any of the tools on your person is going to bolster your field to where if you allow it, you are untouchable. And what I mean by if you allow it, we, we have had, um, you know, there's very few people out there that have received tools like a golden fire generator and, you know, and they have severe sensitivities to EMFs, but they're also very much in the fear mind and, um, you know, and they make statements, oh, this stuff's bad. I'm never going to stop it. And, you know, that kind of thing. So they've really reinforced their creation of, I am very knocked off balance and susceptible to electromagnetic fields. And so when they get the tools, they're like, okay, I'm still not right. And when we check in, the tools are perfectly functioning fine but it is their own choices. It's their own beliefs. It's their own fears of that EMF affecting them that they override the ability of the tools. And so once we convince them to be like, okay, I'm going to allow, I'm going to let go. I'm going to allow this tool to do the work to serve me to transform all these electromagnetics. And then once they do, then everything does happen well in the tensor field generators going back to the last statement i made of carrying stuff on your person the tensor field generators do work in the environment i mean you can place one of these in the environment and it clears out you know the golden fire generators a two and a half mile sphere of influence so not only does the the tools hold a a, a harmonious space but they also help you create the harmonious space that you are because that's really where we're going here in 2023 and in this new trajectory is not allowing the tools to do the work outside of us, but bringing the tools in so that we become the transformer. And then pretty soon you don't need the tools. You are simply the transformer. That's where we're going with this. Um, okay. We'll keep going here on questions. Question two. Also, I have I have an energetic transformation kit. Sorry, large trucks outside this morning. For the cell phone tab, does it need to be stuck to my phone or can it just be slipped in the front cover or sleeve? So for the cell phone tabs, the cell phone tabs can be placed anywhere. They can be placed on the case. They can be placed underneath the case. Um, they're a little thick being placed underneath the case. That still works just fine, though. But yeah, they can be anywhere within 18 inches of your cell phone. Because your cell phone puts out about, oh, an 18 to 24 inch field, uh, you know, where, where the strong field is of this. I mean, it extends farther. But the, the main potent field of that, um, as long as your cell phone tab is anywhere within that range, it's going to be working on your phone. <clears throat> Question three. Does any of this equipment need washing, rinsing to refresh or energize? No, not at all. The, the tensor rings are a room temperature superconductor in that they produce an infinite amount of energy. As long as this weld is held and you have a fully functioning ring, I mean, as long as that weld is held, there's nothing you can do to taint this field. And that's it. These fields are untouchable. And so, you know, you cannot come in, um, you know, when Slim Sperling first was developing these tools and he talked to the military, they, the military could not find that they could use or weaponize the tensor rings because even though they produce this, this long column of light that goes out for miles, they were not able to weaponize this. You cannot project ill intent or thought forms or fears, or you cannot project anything that is not in the highest and best through the rings. So the military found that there was, you know, they wanted nothing to do with the tensor rings. Um, so as far as uh, re-energizing anything like that, they never need cleaned or cleared. They always hold their power and potency 
and they grow with you too, especially anything, um, you know, in the alchemist, the wisdom, the new energy, all of these tools are very much made in this new paradigm in that as we, um, as we add to more of the higher dimensional aspects of these tools, because again, these tools function because of their higher components, kind of like the human and you have a soul similar to that. You have a tensor field, but you have the etheric template, the higher aspect of these tools within the etheric template are all of the, that's where the miracles and magic take place. The frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms of the earth, all the different rays of light, all these potentials and possibilities of healing, clearing, release, all of those potentials and possibilities are found in the field. And so your tools will always be upgraded because as we update and upgrade the energetic tools, well, like let's say the wisdom ring, we're going to take the wisdom ring and we're going to add in these cool new energetics and potentials that we found by working on ourselves. We're going to add these into the etheric templates. So then anybody who owns that wisdom ring then will be able to access those fields as well. So, um, you know, that's really a beautiful thing about the tensor tools is that they never need clean, clear. They never need recharged and they will always continue to grow. Um, you can physically clean the tools and with that we send a little uh cleaning card and then plus on our youtube we have a copper clean instruction and that'll walk you through some of the the cleaning instructions for the copper if you wish but it does not affect the patina does not affect the energetics uh question number four how does the technology work is it mainly the intention scientific fact that it can share with others to help them understand yeah, we can do a quick rundown of how a tensor ring works. Copper is a crystal structure. Copper wire creates a piezoelectric energy flow one way. We fold the wire in half, we twist it, we cut it, we bring the ends together. So it's creating a counter rotating flow of piezoelectric energy. But it's this very specific measurement of these cubit measures cut to the hundred thousandths of a centimeter which makes this a functioning ring. These cubit measures come from things like the Great Pyramid, the city of Teotihuacan, new geometries coming onto the planet. Um, these sacred measurements are what creates this field. So then scientifically, physically, we have a working tensor field, but with Twisted Sage Studios, we have our proprietary, well, because I've been creating these for lifetime, higher dimensional tools, the etheric templates that I was just talking about. That is really what sets a tensor ring off from any other tensor ring. Ours is because of the higher dimensional aspect of the rings. Um, you know, they're smart rings. It's basically, as I was saying, that there's all those available potentials within this ring what determines what comes through at any given time is your consciousness, your soul, if you wish. It is so we see that as you hold on to this ring, so does other parts of you, of your soul. And it is always your soul that's in charge of what comes through. So there is a safety feature on these tools that you can never get too much it does not bring through the the detox, the physical, mental, emotional detox. Well, yeah, the spiritual detox will come, but that's between you and your soul. <laughs> you know, the release work, the, the shadow work, as they call it. Um, and that's it, too, is that these tools are meant to hold space for you to do the shadow work so much easier. Um, and that's something that we're going to really get deep into in our lightworkers program that we're doing um, which we'll talk more about here later all right so oh hey we got one more that just came in uh when will you have a session with the beta toy beta coil and can the ring be used by itself 
So for the Bader coil, um, you know, I've been talking about doing a session with that and, and, um, you know, cause we have a lot of the, the, the tool videos, the tool webinars, and this is the Bader coil. And then there's that copper ring within there. And yes, we sell that copper tensor ring separately. And it's one of our cheapest rings, actually 21 bucks. You can use that ring separately, um, for all purposes, electromagnetics, yourself for meditation for water for your for your supplements whatever um it's still just a perfect tensor ring um but this tensor ring is energetically specifically designed for the beta coils but it works for all the other purposes but um we will do the videos for products again here soon as well as begin to create more new products there's I feel like we're just kind of in these doldrums right at the moment. Not really doldrums. We are getting ready to, um, we're, we're realigning and recalibrating and just finishing up, tossing overboard anything that does not serve us because we're getting ready to go on this beautiful jet stream ride here. You know, as creators, um, things are just opening up and things are going to flow fast. So, as soon as things start to open up and flow in that way, we're going to be recreating what our store looks like, what our tools look like, the energetics. There's more energetics coming in and there always is. And so I think that's another reason we're kind of waiting to figure out what we're doing with a lot of the tools as far as discontinuing or making new tools is because there are new energetics that will be coming in at some point in time. And I feel they may not be here until March or April. But anyway, let's see. I think that's all the questions from email. Yep. All right. So we'll jump over here to the questions tab. Have some oat milk latte real quick. Okay, Kira, I have a wisdom wand pendant in silver. Do I need to carry anything else or is this enough? Oh, no. That is absolutely perfect. Yeah, I wonder if that's the question we answered online. Um, no, it that that one wand is perfect. And um, if you did miss my answer to that question, um, you can go back and check the recording too. <clears throat> I have a smart meter electrical clearing disc and I notice a difference at home. I'm more at ease, but since I'm an empath, I still get flustered and stressed when the girls come back from school since they've been around so many people. What would you advise? For about two years, I stayed away from people because I could not handle what they carry in their field, especially coming home from school. Now my daughter's 12, seventh grade. And she has to wear, she wears a heck of clasp. She wears a heck of clasp every day because if she doesn't, she starts to, you know, my daughter is really sensitive in that she can unconsciously read people's thought forms. Um, not, not the best gift in the world, I suppose, for a lot of people, especially a seventh grade girl figuring her way out in the world. But, um, if she wears that heck of clasp, she can come home and be a quite a bit more clear. Once in a while, she'll still have stuck energies and I still can't get her to do the work. So in her bed, she has a Gaia sphere and a Taurus and a wisdom wand. And so when she comes home and she has a stomach ache at night because of those dense energies that she carried and would not let go of, then at night, once she feels the effect on herself, on her physical, then she'll go through and clear those energies. So what you can do with your kids is you can send the kids with tools. Um, you know, whether it's a cell phone tab, whether it's a tensor field generator, we have a two inch tensor field generator that can go in a backpack. Um, you know, and that's really a great way to do it is to send a tensor field generator to school and have them leave it in their locker if possible. Um, or in their backpack, one of the smaller two inch that don't 
that don't squish um, because then it's going to be covering everybody in the school because the public schools carry so much. Just the schools alone carry so many different wild frequencies and intentions and stru energetic structures and entrainments and all kinds of stuff. So then you get the kids on top of that that come to school every day and bring all of their debris from home, um, you know, and they bring it to school and share that debris with everybody. Um, this just helps to keep the schools more clear. So, you know, you can also, if you're into doing energy work, you can also anchor a column of light into the schools and that can assist as well. Um, so, you know, as far as, yeah, as far as the girls carrying their stuff when they come home, um, either have to start teaching them how to clear themselves, get them a pendant or a bracelet or something to put in their backpack. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that one besides just being aware that it's energy that they carry is really the first step. And then, you know, finding ways to work with it from there. Bernard, I'm thinking of placing a candle in a wisdom generator using oils in the candle. Will the generator amplify them? Y yes. So the generator will broadcast and amplify whatever you're putting in there. So if you're using the candle and you're using, um, you know, candle magic, candle magic, and you're using your, you know, your intentions and everything with the candle, then that is going to amplify everything that you are doing there with that candle. Now with the oils, not only is it going to be broadcasting those energetics of the oils, but yes, it, it will, um, amplify, it'll potentize them. It'll bring more of, of their potentials in, and it will just bring them to a higher vibrational state, clean and clear. And of course, it's working with the consciousness of those essential oils, and it brings that consciousness in more of those oils. Um, Vindy, what do you say are the three best advices you've received from Brenda? Any advice to be more centered on the self within the heart? Go in the heart space. That's the number one thing be in the heart. So the advice from Brenda would be, yeah, be in the heart space. Um, I don't know what the other things that Brenda would say, um, you know, take your time to just be during the day, treat yourself right, hydrate, take care of yourself. And when you need to just stop and be, stop and be, um, you know, I know those are big things that we're going through right now and, oh gosh, there's a lot of words of wisdom <laughs> Brenda has, but you know, it just really kind of depends on where you're at and what you're doing with things. Um, you know, I know Brenda would say laugh, laugh. Yeah. That would probably be the third thing Brenda would say. Yep, just be in the heart. Don't take things serious. Laugh. Allow. Be soft. Be gentle with you. And the big thing Brenda and I were discussing yesterday with our mom is to not take on everybody else's shit. Not try to go out and heal the world. Not try to help Aunt Martha if she doesn't want the help. Poor Aunt Martha, I'm going to go in and save her. No, you, you, you got to let Aunt Martha walk her path. You got to let Aunt Martha do what she came here to do. If you jump in and you try to clear Aunt Martha's cancer and try to make her all better, well, shit, now she's got to come back and she's got to try it all again because this is part of what she's doing. This is her soul's journey. And so, you know, as... Gosh, who was it? Adamus, I believe, said, true compassion is allowing others to be on their path without trying to fix or heal them because we're not here to live perfect human lives, or we haven't traditionally been. Maybe we are now, but we've traditionally been here for our experiences. And so, 
um, you know, stepping in and trying to save everybody is kind of a disservice. You can. Okay, so that's where we get into more of the in-depth of shining your light, of holding space. Because then it is simply a reminder that you are bringing by bringing your light, by holding space to that person. You're bringing that reminder to them in the soul. And then they can choose to shift or else maybe then they'll ask you for your help. And then you can step in and be of all the service when they step in and ask you, hey, can you be of service for this? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm going off on some tangents today. <laughs> I'm still not quite fully there, you guys. I had to take, uh, God, we were doing, what was it, two weeks ago, we were doing um, light workers, And I knew the night before that I wasn't supposed to do the Lightworkers Academy, but... I didn't want to cancel it. I thought maybe I could hold the space, but man, I was not in a space to hold space a couple weeks ago. And so, um, and we'll talk more about light workers Academy today. Is there a tool that would help clear with allergic reactions within the body? The wisdom wand to me is the best tool for working with physical and for harmonizing. So really to me, the wisdom wand is, is my go-to for harmonizing things within the body. So basically, um, you know, uh, allergic reactions, you can harmonize them to the body or ask the body, ask, you're asking the body basically to harmonize these things that come in. And so if you have an allergic reaction, let's say to, to pollen, um, you know, hay fever, allergies, simply go into the heart space, sit with the body, and then see that allergen and ask the body to harmonize it. So doing that consciousness work. So the consciousness work is really always the answer. You can still use the tools. Again, the tools are tools. They are there to help us. So you can also go into the heart space, have your wisdom wand, have this field, this pollen, and wand it. Imagine using your visualization, imagination, intention, and the tool, sending energy to this field and then asking it to harmonize in with you. So it's it's really all about intention, visualization, imagination. So when we're using the wand and we're doing this thing, thought process, this is kind of like a it's this kind of like a ceremony. You know, it's it's um it's still simplified from doing other energy work, but the simpler, the better that you can be there and just treat it as energy, that everything is energy, that here is this field of pollen or whatever your allergen is, just seeing it as energy and saying, hey, energy, harmonize with me, harmonize with my body. And the more you can step in, you're in your power, your belief, you're like, hey, harmonize to my body. I am a master. You are my energy. You are here to serve me in my highest and best, you know, come from that style of stance and, um, and see what happens because this is really where we're all trying to get to right now is to be able to do this work of all energies within our creation. You know, you have an allergy, harmonize and allow it to be that simple, harmonize and then let it go and know that that is harmonized to the body, that it's not going to cause any more allergens. Uh, Laura, I'm told my auric field is chaotic weak and I can't heal because of trauma and emotions I've identified with, such as resentment, hatred. What is the most beneficial trinity breath, etc.? So... You know, first I was going to say, I don't believe anything anybody tells you and make, it that your, make that your story. But yet I can see that, you know, because of the trauma and emotions you've identified with and carry. 
And that's it right there. That's it right there is you have to choose to release those. You have to choose to forgive you and everybody. Knowing that that was an experience that was created for you, no matter how traumatic, no matter how hideous, you have to forgive. You have to see that as an experience that that was brought in as an experience that you agreed upon with this person to create this experience, to bring that into wisdom, light, wisdom. So the wisdom wand, again, is a phenomenal tool for doing the meditation. December 2nd, uh, I believe it was, of 2022, 2021, we put out a video on... Um, on 50 questions Friday and it was coming to the zero point and it was basically about drawing in all of your experiences into the center and then bringing them into wisdom and this is what we're going to do in the next light workers class too so if you want to sign up for that um, and it's free so basically we're just going to bring everything into wisdom so that way you carry those traumas and those other stuff that you carry that's in your field that's not allowing you to just fully ignite and lift and be yourself. You know, you have all this weight. That's what this is about, is about dropping the weights, bringing that in as wisdom and light and consciousness, and that just keeps shifting you. So, um, so yeah, the most beneficial thing that I would say, Laura, would be, yeah, definitely the Trinity breath. You know, you could do that meditation from December 2nd of 21. Sign up for our light workers um, webinar that's coming up. Or sit with the wisdom wand. And we do have information on the wisdom wand and some videos on, on releasing there. Joe, I ordered a pouch so I can wear this during the day. I forgot the percent, but our bodies have a large water content. We'll wear in the Badar coil five hours a day, purify and restructure my blood and water. Huh, that's fantastic, Joe. Yeah, I carry mine in my pocket all the time. Um, so the Badar coil, yes, our bodies are arguably 60 to 70 some percent water. Um, you can say up to 80%. But anyway, it's at least 60, at least 60% water is what our bodies is. Excuse me. Um, so yes, having that Badar coil on your person or being in any of these tensor fields is going to work with the water within the body as well. Not only the bioelectric, biomagnetics, but it is working with the water. And of course, yes, the blood and the DNA and everything within the body. Um, so being, so keeping the tools on your person is a fantastic thing to do. You can never get enough of this, too much of this energy. It doesn't cause harm to be in the fields 24 seven. So yeah, having the tools on the body. And I like the idea that Badar coil that you're carrying that because yes, that is going to raise the frequency and vibration, restructure the water, balance the pH of the water, and it's going to work on the blood and the DNA and everything. Um, you know, the, these bait are coils, well, and all the tools I tell you guys, I cannot, I'm trying to rewrite the website right now to be simple, but I cannot express the profundity of these tools. It is so hard to express the profundity of these tools. Um, so yeah, just carrying any of these in the, in your field. And I, you know, like Joe says, carrying that bait coil on person is going to create shifts physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. <clears throat> Thank you for the information about the girls in the school. For me, is it better to get the infinity pendant or wisdom wand? Um, you know, the, the infinity pendant is, is still a great, a great tool, but I, I would move into the wisdom wand you know, and you can even do just a little uh, wisdom wand pendants, but I would move into anything in the wisdom and the alchemist because that is the newer energies, and those are the energies that are just they're so profound. Um, and they do a lot of the work automatically, a lot of that release work. 
And that's it is like all these newer tools are basically holding that space and that field. So you don't have to do as much of the work consciously. You still do, but the majority of things just start to loosen up and flow and turn into wisdom without you even realizing it. Um, so I, I would suggest either, you know, the, the wisdom one pendant or the, um, quantum heart coil pendant. But if you are attracted to the infinity, please go with that. And, and really to find your discernment on what tools to get, just go into the heart space and imagine both those tools. And what I would do is I would imagine that infinity in this hand in the wisdom wand in this hand and I would close my eyes and I would be like, okay, I'm bringing this infinity up to my sternum. See how it feels. I'm bringing this wisdom wand up to my sternum. <sighs> See how it feels <sighs> for me. I definitely, the wisdom wand takes my breath away. So, you know, that's really a great way to discern anything. Heart space. Imagine it. Imagine it, hold it to the sternum, feel, hold it to the sternum, feel. You can do this with anything. Choices, supplements, choices, decisions, <laughs> feel into them for sure. Uh, Melissa, do you have an elevator pitch for tensor technology for when others ask? <laughs> um that's kind of what I'm working on is that 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 pitch to be able to put this onto our our new website's homepage is is simplicity. And the thing is is that like when I go and I go to conferences and fairs and shows and stuff basically how I describe tensor tools to each individual person is different because I kind of feel where they're at. And I will take it to where they're at because there's such a broad spectrum that these tools cover and do and have the ability and potentials for such a huge spectrum. And so, you know, you got to kind of figure out where they're at on that spectrum. Are they more into electromagnetics, personal healing without the woo woo stuff? Are they more into the new agey metaphysical stuff? you know, and just kind of play it from there where they're at. So you can talk about the scientific. You can just simply talk about, you know, how it restructures water. Um, sorry, I wish I had a short, simplified version to say that. And be on the lookout for the new website coming out in the next few months because that should have a nice, simplified, elevator version of what the tools are doing and doing for you. Like I say, they're just, it's so, such a broad spectrum of what their potentials and abilities are. Um, like I say, I'm really having a hard time describing these tools to, you know, in just a few sentences because of the profundity. Um, oh yeah, and we're also looking for a graphic artist if anybody's interested in in sending in a resume for graphic art. Oh my goodness. Vindy, I recently read true freedom is when you allow others the freedom to be themselves. <laughs> That's beautiful. I think working on ourselves is the way to go. The rest will take care of itself. Yeah. Yeah, that's what this journey is all about. It's about us shifting ourselves and, you know, and then we can hold space. We can just be ourselves and we can just be, and that's just holding space. And that allows others around us to shift too. And when you do the work for yourself, you're doing the work for everybody because we're all connected in, you know, we're all connected in the mass consciousness grid. We're all connected with all these other beings in our reality. And so as we do the work, we're doing the work for countless others. So yeah, keep doing it. You guys, it's, it's really, it's really a big deal right now. Um, we're, we're stepping into some <laughs> beautiful things that we have been awaiting for, for eons and eons. Uh, let's see. 
Ah, hey, Samson. So Samson has his elevator pitch. Tensor rings are room temperature superconductor that are a quantum heart-based technology that are only limited by your imagination. <laughs> yep, that's a good one. Uh, that's pretty encompassing. Um, let's see. So let's see. What else? Um, looks like that was all for questions. And yeah, so really, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say to you guys that are signed up for the Lightworkers Academy. Um, gosh, I had to do the Lightworkers Academy. It had to be out for December 21st, um, you know, and I had to produce that one. And it's time it was you know, gosh, I got to do this. And this, this has to be the name. I don't like the name Lightworkers Academy. And I don't consider myself a light worker, not in the traditional sense, because that was where I used to be as a master angelic being was is that I was a light warrior. And oh my goodness. And that's what I think a lot of people feel light workers truly are is it's the light against the dark. But light work to me is truly your own internal cultivation, release, connection, expansion, all of it. The remembrance, the coming into your power, your light is what a light worker is to me. And so I struggled there to continue on with the Light Workers Academy because so many, I was trying to find, one of the reasons that I was doing this was to try to find that bridge to come into the, that, that more um, refined version of light work to bring people there to that more refined version of light work versus being light warriors and fighting the dark because there's so many people that are coming up into that whole reality right now that whole spectrum that are waking up and that's part of that whole becoming aware process you know when people say oh i'm woke because i see all the dark well so it's the wokers that i'm trying to catch to bring over to here um that are out there battling the dark so that they can learn to clear the dark within themselves and then there's no more dark out here so that's really where this Lightworkers Academy is going is I'm going to shift the gears a little bit with it because um, I don't even know about doing anchors of light anymore because light columns are still all about, oh, there's energy outside of me that's dense and dark and we judge it and we got to put a light anchor and we got to help it. And we got to clear it. And anymore, it's not about doing, <clears throat> judging, fixing, changing anything in our outside reality because our outside reality is a true reflection of our internal. Once the internal is cleared, clean, connected, the external then is cleaned, cleared, and connected. I'll tell you what, we're having some deep epiphanies even right now with entities and a lot of the stuff that we've been doing over this past 10 years and that twisted sage has been about and about the tools that it creates for doing this work it's no longer that was a perception and that was also a time and an era that we lived in this clearing work this light work and we're stepping in as master creators now and so that's where this light worker academy is going to start going is we're going to probably change the name of it down the road. But um, I did a part two here <laughs> a couple of weeks ago and I was not in a space to hold the space. And so we're going to have another part two coming up here soon. Um, and then after part two, we're going to do light anchors. And then after that, we're going to stop the um, Lightworkers Academy and we're going to step into something different, something more truer and aligned with who we are and where we're at and where we're going. Um, so anyway, and just checking over here on chat and questions. Do you guys have any plans to expand the line of pendants for animals perhaps? Um, yeah, so we do have the horse harmonizer ring, which can also be used with any animals. Um, we also, the infinities, the copper infinities, we need to gear these more towards, um, animals, but 
you know, we were donating those little copper infinities to no kill animal shelters for a while. Um, because these little infinities, when you put it onto a dog or a cat collar, it connects the heart of them to the heart of the earth. And so it takes hyperactive dogs, calms them. It takes your old rickety dogs and it, it helps to re revive them a bit. Um, because of that connection from heart to heart with the earth and with the animal. Um, so we, we really do need to kind of market these a little bit more for animals too. I do agree with that. And so thank you for making that, um, that comment because, you know, animals, animals are so much can shift in these fields a lot easier than people can because most people hold on to their beliefs and their structures and their traumas and their suffering and everything else and they hold on to it and they fight for it where animals are like oh you know i'm i'm not holding on to this and so animals can shift so much easier all right let's see i think we got some more questions here and I understand that we all need to work on ourselves, but what to do about my strong concern for the climate change is ongoing wars. I feel helpless. So when you look outside of yourself and you can always find disparity everywhere and in everything, it is a matter of perception. And so if you can go into the heart space, when you are truly in the sacred space of the heart, when you've taken your breath, when you've moved your consciousness from here to here, the world you see is different. So, as Brenda would say, don't look at the news if the news changes you. If you look at the news and it affects you and you start to carry the worry and the strife and the shit that they want you to carry because basically we are creators mass media knows we are creators they will put things in front of you for you to help co-create those realities we as humans are powerful co-creators when we're in the head, when we're in fear, necessity, and survival mode. When we move out of our head into the heart, then we look at the world. The world is not the same perception from the heart. It's not burying your head in the sand. It's not being ignorant to the fact that there's things out there that, oh, we need to look at this and we need to look at this we need to worry about this and we need to worry about this that is an old paradigm of helplessness of seeing energy is outside of us as us being just at the whim of all creation you are a powerful creator and so Wherever you put your attention, you are putting your energy and you are putting your energy of creation to wherever you're putting your attention. And if you're putting your attention from fear, necessity, survival onto something, it's, yeah, then you're done. So as my sister would say, only look at the news if you can change the news, if you can be so much in your heart, in your power, standing, grounded, connected in the heart space, in your light, and you look at the news and you're just sending your love and your light to the news, no matter how horrific it is, you don't take it on. You freaking send it your light. You're holding space. That's where we want to be. We don't want to be a whole ocean of beings who feel like there's all this stuff outside of us and we're just on, we're just at the whim of all the flows of energy. No, we are creators and we are standing in our power. And as we stand in our power, we can help shift creation. So again, avoiding that news is not putting your head in the sand. Avoiding that news is allowing you to stand in your power. When you stand in your power, then you can look at the news. 
and then you can start to change it instead of it affecting you and you helping to create the news. Um, let's see. Is there a children's version of the Heka clasp? My niece and nephews call them my C's and always ask to hold them. It's beautiful to see how much they love them. You mentioned your daughter wears one. Is it just one of the regular size or one squeezed tight? So my daughter actually wears the uh, the chalice clasp, which is the larger of the two. And, um, you know, she's she's a pretty big girl for for her age at 12. But hers, hers almost touches. There's about that much on this underside, about that much space between the ends as she squeezes it around. And she just leaves hers on 24-7. You know, she just always has hers on. But um, even that, the smaller the two HECA clasps, um, just the regular HECA clasps that we have, those are the smalls, the smaller size, the golden fire. Um, those ones are perfect for kids. Um, I think it's a size five inch wrist that they'll fit easily. Um, and I think it can go smaller than that even. So yeah, just the standard heck of clasps for, for kids work great. Uh, Joe, an example of what you're saying is that there would have been no pandemic this past two years if people turned off their TVs. I don't know. I have a different view on the pandemic that the pandemic that uh, COVID is here was here to help create this giant shift. Um, I feel that this COVID was flipping beautiful because it shook everything up and it changed everything and it could have been a lot more horrendous. I'm not saying it's not horrendous that the people died, but the people that died, huh, they got an easy way out and it was, you know, death is not <sighs> death is just the, the, the passing of the human. We are infinite and um Anyway, I feel COVID was really a huge, huge catalyst for all this change that we're going through. Um, yay. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful time for sure, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Spattered with a little bit of what the freaking hell. <laughs> you know, I know it's, I know it can be some rough days. Um and there's been a lot of things that have been coming up that, you know, Brendan and I have really been talking about a lot lately about how to clear some of these um, soul aspects and how to integrate them and bring them in. Because as these soul aspects come in, they project into your creation and your reality, into your mental and emotional and everything um, and physical, their traumas, their stuff. And some of these soul aspects are pretty strong. And you know, we, we've even been recently, you know, if somebody has an entity attachment, we've been treating it as a soul aspect and it has been clear in them because when we couldn't clear an entity before and it was still there, like what the heck? Cause they just appear to be this being, you know, that's causing disruptions and they're connected into your field. And so once we couldn't clear him as an entity, we we're like, wait, are you a soul aspect? And so we would do the work of the healing and integration. And that took care of it. Um, so there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, question, what does Brenda cover in a reading? So what Brenda does is she goes soul to soul with you. And she basically... Um, you bring up the things that it is that you're wanting to clear and release. So she's not one that'll come in and tell you, Oh, your soulmate or none of that silly stuff. Yeah, hers is, is about you and your field and your physical, mental and emotional things that you want to release. And so when you work with Brenda, she comes in and she works with your soul and just does the clearing work. So most of the stuff that she does is usually either healing or, um, you know, on the physical, mental, emotional, or else it's, you know, stuff that, you know, energetic stuff that's come up or else if you're just to the point that you're like, okay, I'm just done with 
with this with this silly life of of trauma dramas and everything else and i'm ready to shift then you can get an appointment with her too um so it's very personal what she covers in a reading but it's not really a reading of giving you knowledge and information and you come in and ask questions and it's not like that uh working with brenda it's you bring her hey this is what my things are that i want to clear and you her and your soul all work together and clear them hey brenda what would be the best tool for an injured injured knee with swelling wisdom wand Yep, just wand it, Brenda. Um, and as you're wanding it too, and you're running energy to it with your wand, and you can kind of feel it pulsing in there and everything, um, just use your intention that you are going back to the source of this energy and that you are clear in the source of this energy. Because so much of what's coming in right now is not ours and the physical, ours and the physical. It is usually energy that either belongs to a soul aspect or something else that we decided to take on. So make sure that it's yours because I can see that it's corded, that there's a connection, an energetic connection going someplace else. Could be a soul aspect, I don't know. But basically, so when you're wanding your knee, you're just also wanding the source of what caused your knee to be out in the first place. And so that's a beautiful thing about using the wisdom wand and the wisdom tools is, is that you're working here on the physical, but you are also working on all other levels and layers of this creation so that you can get to the source of that creation to have it cleared, harmonized, released, whatever your wording is. Um, and again, when you're doing this kind of work, it's about being simple in the heart, trusting that your soul knows exactly what it is that you are trying to accomplish. So you don't have to get in and be detailed and see it happen and, and, and see it healed and all that stuff. No, you just go in and you hold the space and you, you know, any kind of healing work, you don't want to fight it. You want to allow it to be because it's there serving you. There's a purpose. Any energy that is causing disruptions, all energy is there to serve you. So that energy is there to serve you in some fashion or way. It could be based on an old thing. So basically, as you have that energy, you're just like, no, you're my energy. You're here to serve me. I'm shifting you. Thank you for being. Thank you for the experience, you know. So you're allowing it to be and you're giving it your gratitude all the time that you're running energy to it and intending that that energy goes to the source of that creation. I have the golden fire and light wand. Does that hold the wisdom energetics? Nope. The golden fire and light wand is really a phenomenal wand the energetics of it can be found in the wisdom wands now the wisdom wand again i think is the coolest tool in the universe right now i know there's something cooler coming in i don't know when but this is the tool and that's why we also still have them permanently on sale where you buy one get one 50 off or you buy two you get one free and that, you know, that cuts in, that's, a, that gets us close to our manufacturing costs there, you know, at or over. But I just really feel that it is that important of a tool that everybody has a wisdom wand. Um, they are really flipping amazing because the golden fire and light wands are great because they, they hold a high vibration space, but it's the wisdom field and it's actually the wisdom wand that, I saw holds that meditation that I keep talking about that, that zero point space from December 2nd, a couple of years ago, um, 21, that it, um, that space that these hold, it's just amazing because it is going in. And the reason it's called the wisdom field is it is taking all of that experience and that reality and creation and it is shifting. It is bringing it into a higher harmonic It's bringing it in as wisdom and light. And so then that specific creation 
um, it changes. It's either gone or it's brought into a higher octave. Um, so the wisdom wands to me are getting to the source of what the creation is. These are getting to the source of it. And, and again, you don't need to buy the tools. You can simply access those fields. And again, these are simply space holders, they're tools, but they are quantum tools. They're higher dimensional tools. So that's why in some of our videos where we give you the attunement to it, to it, basically you're just feeling into it. You're feeling the energy, you're grabbing it on a quantum level, you're bringing it in and you're working with that energy field. And so that's the beautiful thing again about the tools is that they are truly freely available quantumly but the physical tools are pretty flipping amazing too. Um, all right. Uh, how to sign up for the light classes in a session with Brenda or Brian. Uh, just go to twistedsage.com on the homepage of twistedsage.com, not twisted sage um, store, but just twistedsage.com. And there at the top, there is distance healing. That's where you find information on both Brenda, my sister, and I. And then if you scroll to the bottom of the page at twistedsage.com, you will see that there is a blog post for the Lightworkers Academy. Just go there and that's where you can sign up. And so I'm sure that we're going to have a session here this next Wednesday. I'll probably pre-record it here over the weekend. We'll see. Um, but yeah, look for this coming next Wednesday that we'll be doing a session. That session two, we're going to redo that session. Um, because again, a couple weeks ago and I tried to hold space, I wasn't able to. So if you noticed, I took that one off of YouTube and we're just going to redo that one. Um, because I was very much in my humanness that day. And so let's see. I have a Nick Edwards pyramid. If I added your rings, will it lift the vibration? I don't know what the Nick Edwards pyramid is. Um, but yeah, totally adding the tensor rings to any energy tools, any geometries, pyramids, it's it's going to amplify everything. Not only does the ring amplify the pyramid in that field but that field amplifies the ring so they they work synergistically together and and it creates something you know smoother bigger brighter i mean they just they just amplify each other how do we approach the tools to perform distance healing on others i don't have a physical tool so we do have let's see where is it at um, for distance healing work, I believe there is a YouTube video that we did the transcending the matrix. It's a three day workshop and that's a free video anymore. You guys transcending the matrix. And if you go there on the, and on the YouTube, um, on the transcending the matrix, there is, um, Amber's gone through and categorized everything in there. So you'll be able to easily find, um, distance healing work. That's one place that I know we've talked about. I'm trying to think of where else we've talked about it. You can do the light anchoring 3.0 light anchoring 3.0 is a, another video attunement to the golden fire and light wands. Um, and then on the product pages that have um, videos that have product videos on them, which are everything from like two years ago and back, I haven't done any in a couple of years, but those ones also have attunements to those tools, such as the wings of talk. You can go to the wings of talk page and on that video, we also talk about, you know, you get an attunement to the tool and how to use the wings of talk for doing distance work. So that's actually the one that I would suggest sending you to is wings of talk product page. And you can get the attunement to that and learn how to recreate that in your field using the columns of light and anchoring that energy tool into your space. And that's a really powerful one.
All right. Well, thank you all for being here today. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you again next time. And um, yeah, maybe check out sign up for our light workers because I think that's going to be it's going to be good. Like I say, we're only going to do two more sessions and then we're going to change it up and we're going to find a whole different name and we're going to go in a new direction with doing the energy work. But I still feel compelled to come in and share any of the leading edge work that we're doing and setting up a field with all of you who wish to attend and just, um, you know, see what comes, comes through because I feel it's going to be a pretty powerful thing. So Anyway, um, be sure to sign up for that if you wish. And otherwise, we'll see you all next time and soon. Happy New Year.